Welcome to the Technical Assistance Pre-Application Webinar for OTA 22007, Community Partnerships to Advance Science for Society or COMPASS Program, Community-Led Health Equity Structural Intervention Initiative. This pre-application webinar will focus on the required letter of intent. Next slide. I'm Yvonne Ferguson, a program leader at the NIH Common Fund, and we want to begin by acknowledging the 40 NIH staff members representing over 20 institutes, centers, and offices that comprise the Compass Working Group, led by the Compass Working Group co-chairs who have contributed greatly to this effort. Next slide. The co-chairs are Dr. Janine Austin Clayton, Associate Director for Research on Women's Health and Director of the Office of Research on Women's Health. Dr. Joshua Gordon, Director of the National Institute of Mental Health. Dr. Eliseo Perez Estable, Director of the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities. Dr. David Wilson, Director of the Tribal Health Research Office. And Dr. Shannon Zank, Director of the National Institute of Nursing Research. Next slide. It is also my pleasure to introduce the webinar panelists. They include Dr. Jennifer Alvidris, Senior Advisor for Health Disparities in the Office of Disease Prevention, Dr. Allison Brown, one of the Compass Work Group Coordinators and Program Director at the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, Dr. Shalanda Bynum, another Compass Working Group Coordinator and Program Director at the National Institute of Nursing Research, Ms. Christina Falk, Health Science Policy Analyst at the NIH Common Fund, and review officer for this opportunity, and Dr. Nathan Stinson, Jr., Director of the Division of Community Health and Population Science at the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities, and who also serves as a Compass Working Group Coordinator. Next slide. As for the webinar agenda, after a brief overview of the Compass Program and the NIH Common Fund, we will provide an overview of social determinants of health structural interventions, and community-led research in the context of the COMPASS program. Next, we will provide more specific information about the COMPASS program goals, including its three initiatives with a focus on the community-led health equity structural intervention initiative. We will discuss eligibility criteria and then discuss the required letter of intent, specifically the letter of intent requirements, how the letter of intent will be reviewed, and how to submit it. We will also discuss elements of the full application, the other transaction authority funding instrument, and wrap up with the opportunities timeline and how to submit your questions. Next slide. The Community Partnerships to Advance Science for Society, or COMPASS program, is a new program supported by the NIH Common Fund and has a keen focus on health equity. It is innovative in that it aims to fund community organizations directly, to partner with researchers and relevant sectors, and design structural interventions that intervene on social determinants of health. The intended impact of COMPASS includes improving health outcomes, reducing health disparities, and advancing health equity research. Next slide. Before we provide you with more details about this opportunity, I want to provide an overview of the NIH Common Fund. The Common Fund is under the Office of the Director and managed in partnership with the NIH institutes and centers. These programs are designed to address emerging scientific opportunities and pressing challenges in biomedical and behavioral research that no single NIH center or institute can address on its own, but are of high priority for the NIH as a whole. These programs are intended to foster innovative ideas with transformative impact, change paradigms, provide infrastructure to support research, develop innovative tools and technologies, and provide fundamental foundations for research that can benefit the broad biomedical and behavioral research community. As displayed in the image, these programs are developed to be transformative, synergistic, catalytic, cross-cutting, and unique. Next slide. The goal of the NIH Common Fund is to move the NIH mission forward faster. It does this by supporting a series of bold scientific programs designed to catalyze discovery in an area of research relevant to the NIH mission. 
these areas of research are cross-cutting rather than focusing on one disease or organ system and advance the missions of multiple NIH institutes and centers. Common fund programs are designed so that each deliverable will spur subsequent biomedical and behavioral science advances that otherwise would not be possible without our strategic investment. Next slide. Now that we've covered the background of the NIH Common Fund, I want to turn it over to my colleague, Jennifer Alvidres, who will highlight scientific, the scientific basis for COMPASS and the community-led health equity structural interventions. Jennifer? Thank you, Yvonne, um, and hello, everybody. So despite longstanding investments to reduce and eliminate health disparities, minoritized uh, racial and ethnic groups and other marginalized populations continue to bear a disproportionate burden of adverse health outcomes across the lifespan and across diseases and conditions. Addressing health disparities and advancing health equity is a profound challenge and quite complex. It involves many sectors and extends beyond intervening within just healthcare settings. Social determinants of health are a major contributor to health disparities and operate on a continuum from fundamental structural causes to individual and family circumstances. On the right, you can see the Healthy People 2030 framework for social determinants of health, which includes the domains of education, access and quality, economic stability, social and community context, neighborhood and built environment, and healthcare access and quality. Addressing fundamental structural causes of health disparities in these domains offers the greatest opportunity to advance health equity and eliminate health disparities. Next slide, please. So what are structural interventions to address social determinants? Using Brown and colleagues' definition, structural interventions attempt to alter the social, physical, economic, and or political environments that may shape or constrain health behaviors and health outcomes and drive and sustain health disparities. So this means moving beyond intervening with individuals to change their knowledge, attitudes, or behaviors to really change systems and environments, to target factors such as economic instability, limited educational and um, employment opportunity, societal and structural racism and discrimination, and lack of resources that all negatively impact health. That's why structural interventions are the focus of COMPASS. Next slide, please. Structural interventions, because they involve systems and structures, can span multiple sectors. So these may include human and social services, commerce, healthcare, economic and urban development, transportation, education, housing, and the criminal and juvenile justice systems, among others. Because the drivers of health disparities are interwoven and interact across these sectors, Multi-sectoral interventions that transcend historical silos maximize the opportunity to eliminate health disparities and advance health equity. Next slide, please. So what are some examples of structural interventions to influence health? And because this is an NIH program, interventions do have to be tied explicitly to health outcomes. So some examples include, but are not limited to, criminal justice system policy changes to address structural, racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic discrimination, universal income programs and policies to address issues of economic instability, high-speed broadband internet expansion to enhance internet connectivity and access to telehealth and other resources in rural and other underserved communities, and community revitalization uh, investment projects to enhance neighborhood and community resources and facilitate health promoting behaviors. And there are more examples uh, in the program announcement. Next slide, please. A key aspect of COMPASS is that it centers around community led research. Community engaged approaches are recognized as key research strategies to address health disparities and advance health equity. Community-led research changes the process by which research has been traditionally been conducted. So community-engaged research usually means that involved communities have a seat at the table. Community-led research means that it's the community's table and they can offer seats to researchers and other collaborators. So community-led research really reflects a transformation in the processes and practices that govern research engagement. A community-led approach aligns with NIH's goal in this program to enhance acceptability and sustainability of effective interventions for meaningful and lasting impact. 
So overall, the intent of COMPASS is to support community-led, multi-sectoral health equity structural interventions as a strategy to advance health equity and sustain positive health impacts for communities. Now I'll pass it over to my colleague, Dr. Shalanda Bynum, Bynum to provide the overview of COMPASS. Thank you, Jennifer. Good afternoon to you all. In this next segment of the webinar, I will provide an overview of COMPASS, goals, initiatives, and activities. Next slide. So the Common Fund Program goals are intended to be achieved within the 10-year timeframe. The overall goals are twofold. First, to catalyze, deploy, and evaluate community-led health equity structural interventions that leverage multi-sectorial partnerships across multiple sectors to advance health equity. The second goal is to develop a new health equity research model for community-led multi-sectorial structural intervention research across the NIH and also across the federal, um, other federal agencies. The intention uh, is that the goals of COMPASS will be carried out in partnership with multiple sectors, including community organizations, federal agencies, businesses, and local and state governments through the formation of local and national health equity research assemblies, also known as HERAs. Next slide. COMPASS is transformative and quite unique in its focus on community-led health equity structural interventions, really given the limited investment in this research area and the evidence impact of structural inequities on health outcomes. There are three initiatives as, a part, uh, as part of the COMPASS program, uh, the Community-Led Health Equity Structural Interventions, also known as Chez CHESIs, the Health Equity Research Hubs, which will provide localized technical assistance and scientific support to the CHESIs, and lastly, the Coordination Center, which will lead overall program management and coordination of administrative, data, capacity building, partnership, training, and the National Health Equity Research Assembly activities. Next slide. As mentioned earlier, the COMPASS program will be implemented over a 10-year time frame. The planned budget is approximately 153 million over the next five years. Um, and this will fund up to 25 community-led structural interventions, up to five health equity research hubs beginning in fiscal year 24, and one coordination center. Uh, so overall, this significant investment highlights the NIH commitment to addressing health disparities and advancing health equity. Next slide. In summary, COMPASS goals will be achieved by the following activities, supporting community organizations and their research partners and co-creating research to evaluate community-led health equity structural interventions by engaging multi-sectorial partnerships, both locally and nationally, and advising, guiding, and sustaining the community intervention by building capacity among community organizations and their research partners uh, in structural intervention research, uh, building capacity in community-led research, and um, fostering sustainability of, of efforts post-funding. By developing methods for capturing social determinants of health information and collecting and analyzing data to evaluate outcomes for community-led health equity structural interventions. And lastly, by disseminating promising approaches resulting from such interventions. Next slide. So the focus of today's webinar is on the letter of intent for the community-led health equity structural interventions. Within this initiative, community organizations will develop, implement, assess, and disseminate innovative co-created community-led interventions. This will be done in partnership with research organizations and other collaborators 
by intervening upon structural factors that produce and perpetuate health disparities. Next slide. A three-phased approach will be used to guide the conduct of the structural interventions. The first two years, that is phase one of the program, will involve intervention planning, and the planning phase will include developing and piloting as appropriate the structural interventions, building research capacity, forging partnerships, and developing a local health equity research assembly, or HERA for short, to provide more local level research facilitation and sustainability support. The project's local HERAs could include um, agencies such as regional federal agency representatives from housing and urban development, the Substance Use and Mental Health Services Administration, Indian Health Service, non-governmental partners, policymakers, community organizations, nonprofit organizations, foundations, public and private sector organizations, and local healthcare organizations. Phase two will focus on implementation of structural of the structural interventions in years three through eight. During this phase, the structural level interventions will be implemented in partnership with the local HERAs and should influence health outcomes across multiple health conditions and diseases. And the final phase of the COMPASS initiative, that is phase three, will be dedicated to assessment, dissemination, and sustainability activities, including assessing the health impacts of the interventions and developing dissemination and sustainability plans. So now that we have provided an overview of COMPASS, its various initiatives, and the three intervention phases, I will turn over turn it over to my fellow work group, working group coordinator, Dr. Nathan Stinson, to provide an overview of the eligibility criteria. Thank you, Shalanda. I wanna mention uh, several aspects of uh, eligibility criteria. Uh, applicants uh, for uh, the program must be community organizations uh, defined as non-federal, non-academic, or non-research organizations that provide good services, support, resources, or advocacy to members of the community. Uh, we have provided uh, a listing of those type of organizations, uh, but I want just to mention um, a few such as community or faith-based organizations, tribal organizations, uh, neighborhood uh, authorities and associations, school districts, social services uh, uh, agencies, and other type of non-federal government organizations um, uh, as eligible uh, entities. Next slide, please. There are some organizations that are, are not eligible uh, for this initiative. Uh, for example, academic research centers, academic health care organizations, and private health care organizations are not eligible for this opportunity. These organizations uh, may be identified uh, in the application as partners uh, with the uh, community uh, organizations. Uh, Non-US uh, non entities, that is foreign uh, applicants are not eligible to apply. Uh, also, non-US components of US organizations are not eligible to uh, apply and foreign components of the project are not allowed. allowed. NIH is particularly interested in applications led by organizations that have a core mission to serve underrepresented or underserved groups impacted by health disparities. Next slide. The letter of intent deadline uh, is November 18th, 2022. Uh, the letter of intent will be used to select community organizations who will be invited to submit 
a full application. If invited to submit a full application by the NIH staff, the recipient or the organization's business official or signing official and the contact principal investigator will be notified and provided with guidance on submission for the full applications. Letters of intent are not binding and will be used only to determine which community organizations are invited to submit a full application. With that said, I will turn this over to my colleague and fellow work group coordinator, Allison Brown, to review the requirements of the letter of intent. Thank you, Nathan. Um, and to cover just briefly the application process, uh, the CHESI application is a multi-step process with organizations first submitting the required letter of intent, and thereafter, NIH will respond to those organizations who submit LOIs. And lastly, applicants will be invited to submit a full application. Next slide. So now I'll cover the specific requirements for the LOI, as well as the submission details. So the LOI should be no more than four pages and outline the following elements. So first, the descriptive information should include the community organization's mission statement, a description of the community organization's research or their programmatic experience, including program evaluation. They should also include the name and description of the established partnerships, which could include other community organizations or other partners that will help them conduct the proposed structural intervention, including the date at which the established partnership came into existence. This section should also include a description of at least one project or significant initiative that the community organization has participated in that relates to addressing health disparities with community members as well as other partners. Next slide. So project information is also required, which should include the project's descriptive title, uh, the name of the project's principal investigator, the NIH designated population that experiences health disparities in the US, the project's geographic area, um, potential health outcomes that could be impacted by the proposed structural intervention, as well as the structural factors for the potential intervention as a part of the full application, and at least one potential research organization or research investigator who has at least agreed to support and to participate in the community organization's full application. And the research partner could be an academic or non-academic institution, and must include the individual's research name, title, as well as their contact information. And lastly, the fiscal management information should also be included, and this would need to provide a description of the community organization's capacity and fiscal experience, as well as their experience uh, available with managing program costs of over 250,000. Next slide. So meanwhile, there are several non-responsive criteria that we would deem that would deem your organization ineligible for the opportunity. And this includes if your organization doesn't have experience working with or working with other established community partners on a particular health problem, if your organization doesn't demonstrate experience participating in at least one health disparities project, and they don't propose a project that focuses on one or more NIH designated population or describe a health outcome impacted by the proposed structural intervention. Uh, you would also be ineligible if you don't describe the structural factors for potential intervention and do not propose at least one research organization who's agreed to partner with your application. And again, an eligible uh, criteria, eligibility criteria is that you have expertise uh, in managing a program greater than 250,000. So if you do not have the organizational capacity and fiscal experience, then you would also not be eligible. Next slide. So we also wanna make sure you're aware of how and when you need to submit your LOI. And the letter of intent deadline is November 18th, 2022 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. And all LOIs must be submitted by the community organization's recipient business official, also known as the signing official, and must be emailed to Yvonne Ferguson at the email address listed here. And additionally, the contact principal investigator must be copied on the email. So if your LOI meets the requirements and submitted by the deadline, Applicant organizations will be notified by December 8, 2022 to submit a full application. And thereafter, a webinar and office hours will be held to provide more guidance to the invited applicants. So with that, now I will turn it over to my colleague, Christina Folk of the NIH Common Fund, 
who will go over the LOI review process. Thank you, Allison. Once you submit your LOI, your submission will undergo an internal LOI review, which includes an NIH internal staff subject matter expert panel that will review the LOIs for responsiveness based on the LOI criteria. Only eligible and responsive LOI submitters will be invited to submit a full application. Meanwhile, LOIs that are non-responsive to indicated criteria will not be invited to submit a full application for this opportunity. Note that the NIH is not responsible for providing feedback on the LOI and will not accept, accept an appeal of the decision. Now I will turn it back over to Yvonne to review elements of the full application and the mechanism for this type of award. Thank you, Christina. I will talk briefly about components required for organizations invited to submit a full application and the other transaction authority mechanism. Next slide. As noted, submission of a full application will be by invitation only and should include the sections listed on this slide. A letter, an abstract, a specific aims page, a bio sketch, bio sketch of each senior and or key personnel or other significant contributors, an application research plan, and for applications that have more than one principal investigator, a multi-principal investigator leadership plan is required, a plan in accordance with NIH policy for data management and sharing is required. The full application should also include human subjects and clinical trials information, a plan for enhancing diverse perspectives, a letter of organizational support, letters of support from proposed partners, collaborators, or consultants, and budget details. Again, only those who are invited would be able to submit a full application. So please, please see the research opportunity for more details. Next slide. This funding opportunity utilizes the Other Transactions Award instrument. Other Transactions Authorities are different than other traditional NIH funding mechanisms, such as grants, cooperative agreements, or contracts. Other transactions allow for nimble addition or subtraction of expertise, tools, technologies, and partnerships to meet program needs. With other transactions, NIH may propose or require changes outside the scope of the opportunity and or the application to meet program needs. Other transactions facilitate engagement of non-traditional partners, have reporting requirements that are tailored for each award, and can award funding based on a number of factors to meet programmatic needs, such as the achievement of agreed upon activities, the availability, availability of funds, or uh, could be terminated or extended by NIH to align with program needs. Next slide. For those familiar with other NIH funding mechanisms, such as grants, cooperative agreements, and contracts, this slide highlights the differences between those mechanisms and transactions. Other transactions are legally binding instruments that may be used for a broad range of research and activities based on an other transactions authority. Unlike other mechanisms, other transactions allow for a greater collaboration between NIH and the principal investigators. As mentioned in the previous slide, it's nimbler and allows for the award to be responsive to priority changes. Other transactions, federal laws and NIH policies are applicable as well as congressional authorizing language. Similar to the other mechanisms, other transactions are governed by overarching federal laws, regulations and policies. And lastly, applications submitted to other transactions undergo a scientific evaluation or an objective review process, which is different from the application review process for grants, cooperative agreements, or contracts. If invited to submit a full application, please find details about other transactions and the research opportunity announcement. And we will also provide further details during um, the full application phase during a technical assistance webinar office hours and webinars planned for December and January. So with that, I will turn it over back to Allison 
to review the, the timeline and provide guidance on how to submit your questions. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, so before we close again, we want to reiterate the timeline and key upcoming dates. Uh, so the research opportunity announcement was released on September 12th, and we are hosting two live pre-application webinars on October 4th and 11th, where you can get your questions answered live. We also plan to host office hours in late October and early November to provide additional support for applicants. So please check the Compass website for when these dates will be released. And the letter of intent is due on November 18th. And after the LOI review, invitations will be sent for submission of the full application by December 8th. Similarly, we plan to host additional an additional set of office hours for those invited to submit a full application. And these dates will be held in December and January before the full application submission deadline of January 23rd, 2023. So once applications are submitted, Full applications will be peer reviewed in March, 2023, and negotiations will be held from April throughout August of 2023. And thereafter, the applications will be reviewed by council in August with the earliest start date of, of September, 2023. Next slide. So to close, we welcome you to submit your questions to the email address provided on the slide. And we also encourage you to look at the Frequently Asked Questions Guide provided on the Compass website for additional guidance. So with that, thank you for attending this webinar and we wish you the best of luck in developing your letters of intent. Have a good one.